It's always fascinating me when it comes to these different wrestling companies when they put on their television shows how they can have these segments that are just fantastic and outstanding and then these segments that are just absolute, complete, dumpster fire, gutter trash. How could the same group of writers, bookers, creative committees, what you know, whatever, how could they put together some well done, incredibly well executed and positioned and laid out segments that really entertain people, get you wanting more, and then they turn around and just do absolute garbage. It's crazy to me. And I, I gotta say, like, when I look to Dynamite each week, I usually did a couple of things out of the show that I really enjoyed or really liked. And then, you know, I also gotta understand what I'm dealing with is that this is geared towards the net beard crowd. This is geared towards the ones that take the moves and the matches way too seriously that if you actually had folks like them in charge of wrestling companies, uh, you wouldn't have nearly the audience that you think you do kind of conversation. It's, it, a lot of it's just pointless moves and circle jerking in the ring. And nothing's accomplished, nothing happens, and nothing makes sense. Perfectly epitomized this week by this opening tag match with the Young Bucks and what's it, TH2, that freaking jobber team? Now... One thing you shouldn't have is your tag team champions, who are also the executive vice presidents, sitting there and struggling to beat a couple of jobbers. It's not like these guys are the number one contenders. It's not like these guys have beaten them in a meaningful spot before. It's not like these guys just lost the tag titles to them or really next in line to face the Bucks for the titles. So why the hell are the Bucks sitting there and sitting there flipping around and letting these guys get all their crap in. It's the same crap we rail on WWE for as we should. These unridiculous or these ridiculous ass 50-50 matches where everybody's got to get their crap in. There's no purpose to anything you do. There's no story being told with anything you do. And even though one team wins, you could argue that both teams lose because nobody gets the hell over. It's a consistent problem and plague with the Bucks of Suck. And every time this company chooses to put them in that opening segment, I just know what I'm in for. A bunch of dumbass moves, no attempt to even try to be characters or try to tell a story, gotta flip and flop the fuck around because you don't know how to actually get over in a meaningful, significant way with a larger audience that you would think you should be trying to appeal to, but knowing these idiots, they probably don't care. And meanwhile, you end up hurting your own stock as the tag champions when you should be one of the featured acts of this company and you do absolutely nothing to elevate the other team that you just sit there and let get a bunch of crap in. Stop working matches like this. Stop putting together matches like this. Stop doing stupid crap like this. It's a shame because the Bucks of Suck do some really nice, incredible moves. It would be nice if you didn't have to sit there, though, and watch them go through the entire arsenal the same way every single match where there's no consequences, nothing ever happens, you got too many goddamn false finishes, and then the finish has always predictably falls completely and totally utterly flat. And then afterwards, you got the frickin' acclaim coming out like they're going to jump the Young Bucks or something. Who's the fucking baby face here? Who are we supposed to get behind here? And all the while, here comes SCU, Kaz... And freaking Daniel's coming out to make the save. Wait, wait, what the frick is going on here? Like, you got these idiots bumping around for 15 minutes and nobody's getting over. And then immediately afterwards, here comes freaking MJF cuts like a 30-second promo. And it works, and it gets him over. Would you rather flip around and risk injury for 15 minutes or be able to do what MJF does? Unbelievable. Like, even the little... Vignette they did, the little package that they had with Darby Allen doing the Rorschach test and the different things. And then when you get to the one that's obviously Sting, he starts laughing like, that's cool. Like, that's different. At least, again, an attempt, even if I'm not totally on board, even if I'm not totally vibing with the Darby Allen character gimmick, I don't get it. I think it's kind of dumb. The bottom line is, is I can still appreciate 
when you do decent television and you attempt to make somebody different and interesting. And then you're at least trying to do that with this guy. And I think he's doing the best that he possibly can with it. But when you sit there and you got these guys flipping and freaking around and you see this all throughout the night in the different matches, like, this is why nobody gets fucking over. That's why you can't break the million viewer threshold and consistently stay there like the hell you should. Unbelievable. And then, of course, Mr. Gloryhound himself. He's starting to get some founder tendencies, some mid-card piece-of-crap tendencies, if you get my drift. He's a long way from it, but by God, you bring in Sting, and who's the first one he's associated with? I'm not saying, but I'm saying, know what I'm saying? It's like it's TNA every day, all over again. But I appreciate Sting, even though when he came out, you see the snow, I'm confused. Is this snow, or is this his dandruff? I don't know. But I appreciate how Sting was basically like, I ain't got time for you, Cody. I want, I want to hear Tony Schiavone say one time, It's Sting! Like that. That was a mark-out moment. And that that's the type of stuff that speaks to, like, back in the day when people used to have characters and personalities and could tell stories. And the commentators didn't totally suck. Like, it's a it's a reminiscence of that time. But I like how Sting, you know, was pointing at Darby Allen a little bit. Like, I got I can't lie. Like, if if Sting was gonna do a match, I personally would rather see him wrestle Darby Allen than I would freaking Cody. Like, who the fuck is Cody? And some of you might sit there and say with Sting, like, you know, you're waiting for him to speak, and it's this whole big hullabaloo, and then it's kind of that. I actually kind of liked it. I liked the fact that it was reserved, rather toned down. Like, you can have him speak something. You don't have to spill all the beans right now. Like, leave some mystery. Leave some intrigue. You know, like, the one thing you know for sure with Sting is nothing is ever for sure. I like that. Like, that makes sense. Like, it actually fits the Sting character. So I was perfectly fine with this promo segment. Just like I was that inner circle segment in in the middle of the show. That was fantastic. Like you were able to accomplish so many things there. You're getting heat on MJF, but you're teasing friction between him and Sammy Guevara, but also Sammy Guevara and the group as a whole. You're teasing t friction and tension between Wardlow and Jake Hager. My God, Jake Hager speaks who the hell knew. Like, Ortiz, give that man more mic time. Because he was really good in this spot. Like, everybody came out of this segment, I think, looking better for it. Hager and Warlow both looked intimidating and impressive. Neither one of them backing down. MJF just being MJF and the freaking superstar that he freaking is. Jericho being Jericho. Ortiz, I thought, shined really well. And Sammy Guevara looked good. The Spanish God. You're potentially positioning him for a baby facer. But you could also, the way you've done this with this, I mean, you could do so many different things. You could be setting up the Sammy Guevara turn, but in reality, you could actually be setting up a turn on Jericho. Like, there are so many things you could do. Like, this was fantastic. Like, I look at segments like this, and the one with Sting, and I'm like, how could the same company that could do some of this stuff allow abortions of matches like what happened in the opener to take place? It's crazy. And even like when I see this Abaddon lady, you know, like, looks weird. To me, it is weird. Seems kind of a low-rent gimmick to me, if I'm being honest. But there's also an appeal to that. Like, it's actually kind of cool. The look is so different and so unique that even when the women are only getting, like, two minutes here to do anything, so we're basically doing AEWWE Divas matches, it's glorified what it is, at least you could say, like, here you've actually got what could be an interesting character. Here is somebody that you say, oh, that's somebody that my eyes might be drawn to, that I might actually want to see what they're going to do. You know, the Hikaru Shida, no, not really. Although I like how they incorporated her in this after the match, you know, and helping having her come out and help to save the baby face. But, you know, I was more interested in Abaddon, and I'm like, okay, you know, I got my knocks against the gimmick and the performer, but I can also give credit where credit is due. You see how this works, guys? I can sit there and say, you know what? That's interesting. That's something. What's not interesting, what's not good, though, 
is who the hell decided to have Brandy get any promo time whatsoever? Who the hell thought that she needed to be the one that sits across from Shaq? Shaq! Big Daddy Diesel. I'm the real Diesel. I'm the real Superman. Like, who thought this was a good idea? Really? Seriously? Why do we continue to give Brandy Rhodes speaking parts? Like, if you had her coming out and auditioning for your play, just even your local high school play, you'd make her a freaking train! You sure as hell wouldn't want to give her any speaking parts. You sure as hell wouldn't want to have her do anything that really involves acting of any kind because it's god awful brutal and terrible. Even the whole thing about dumping water and pouring water on Shaq's face, that looks so incredibly fake. It's so ridiculous. It's so overly done. It's typical Brandy Rose. Leaving you to ask the question yet again, if she wasn't sleeping with her husband, one of the EVPs of the company, what purpose does she serve other than eye candy? Just saying. I even saw her tape to Twitter, and she's trying to talk trash about Jade Cargill. Number one, leave my girl alone. Number two, leave my girl alone, bitch. Number three, most importantly of all, Brandy Rose, who the Fuck are you to shit on anybody's promo skills? More than half of the damn bums here on YouTube can cut better promos than you do. And that's your job! Begs the bigger question, why is that your job? As far as the people sitting there saying, I don't want to see Shaq wrestle. You know what? I don't want to see the Young Bucks flip around for 15 plus minutes in a garbage ass mask, but I consistently get that. So I got to suffer through that. Then you know what? Yeah, I want to have somebody with mainstream name recognition. Give me a little bit of that. What's so wrong with that? That's why a lot of you morons, a lot of you idiots, I would never put anywhere close to writing or booking for my wrestling company. Because these things that make sense from a crossover, the NBA season getting close to starting here in less than two weeks. Shaq is a big household name Hall of Fame player. You know, stuff that he does is high comedy. Why would you want to potentially incorporate Kenny the Jet Smith or Charles freaking Barkley into any of this? No, nobody would want to do that because, by God, everybody might actually be entertained. As far as the whole thing about, like, hey, him wrestling Cody or not, if he does, cool. If he doesn't, cool. But I gotta watch some of this other garbage every week. You can give me a little bit of that. That's okay. And the main event, before we get there, Kenny Omega and Don Callis. Does anybody else find it's ridiculous that you've got a brand new world champion and you did this kind of screw job, at screwy finish, and you're going with this whole, we're going to Impact Wrestling. And oh my God, what's happening? We're leaving open the door of the possibility. You got Tony Khan sitting there doing a paid advertisement during Impact Wrestling on Tuesday night. And then you got Don Callis and Kenny Omega coming here on Wednesday night. Why the hell were we barely mentioning this for the first hour and a half of the show? It's not like it's your world champion or anything. Oh wait, it is! Why the hell are you treating your freaking world champion like he's a backup act? Well... When I look at the promo, I kind of understand why. Kenny Omega sucks. He absolutely sucks. Like, so many of y'all have been pumping him so full of smoke for so damn long. Like, I guess if you have a passion and a boner for Japanese-style wrestling, Japanese-style gimmicks, like, maybe this is your deal. But the dude doesn't translate. He basically did the same crap that they did Tuesday night, here again on Wednesday night, just maybe spend a little more time doing so, and it just seemed ridiculous, and you accomplished nothing. You didn't set the table for anything else. We got no response or answer from Moxley. We got no additional or new challenges. We got nothing. It was fucking stupid. And this was the big hook at the end of last week's show. New world champion going to impact. What does this mean? And he did absolutely nothing with it. Like, if you're going to go there, go there. And if you're not, don't. It was just really, really bad, in my not-so-humble opinion. But the main event, MJF, Orange Cassidy, went down exactly as it should have. It was a competitive contest, and it was a challenge. But back-to-back, -back, MJF gets the diamond ring as he should. It was clean. It was clean. Don't want to hear anything about you, about the shenanigans, anything else. I like how they tease the little 
Eddie Guerrero tribute. That was that was well done. I like that. Although you would say, if you're truly going Eddie Guerrero, then technically wouldn't Orange Cassidy have won the match? Just throwing it out there, just saying. But who cares about consistency anymore? Because you nerds sit there and geek out for guys that can only flip and kick and kill each other. Like, I mean, brought up the whole three, what ended up being the three on two match with Eddie Kingston and his crew versus Lance Archer. Like, I didn't even bring that up. Like, I don't even want to talk about that. Like, Eddie Kingston with his mic in his hands. Yes, I want to see. Some of the stuff that they're putting him in. No, I'll pass. I'm pretty good on that, actually. But this main event match, like, once you get to the finish here, who's the who's the one that you're spotlighting? Is it MJF or is it Miro? Like, you, at the end, you've got Kip Sabian and Miro are out, and now Miro's getting involved, and Miro's laying waste to people, all the while looking completely and totally ridiculous. If that's supposed to be drip, then his faucet has dried up. I'm sorry. That shit looked horrible, Miro. I don't know what the hell you were wearing last night. It was god-awful. Just like the finish to this was kind of god-awful. Oh, now all of a sudden we want to take Miro seriously. Now all of a sudden we want to make him like a monster. But all the while, we've really accomplished absolutely nothing. And, and now you've got MJF, who is really one of your franchise players, has won this match in this main event. He's gone back-to-back -back as the Diamond Ring winner. Like, you would think you would put a little more shine on it, but they just couldn't get away from Miro. They just couldn't stop shining the camera on Miro. I just thought it was dumb. Not a good way to close out the show. So for the for this week, like the good to me was very good to great. This is also the problem was you had bad. You had lots of bad. And now I appreciate that AEW, I don't know who whose idea it was, but I'm thankful. Yes, yeah, you gave me some Jade Card. Oh, sweet Jesus, Mary and Mary. Like her and Red Velvet going after each other, like. Hug it out, ladies. Touch bosoms. It's okay. Maybe a little good game on the rear end. Maybe get a little excited. Get a little curious. And maybe you kiss a little. Like, then, then you go off and you spend some quality time together. <sighs> let me be clear. Just because you let me see Jay Carville at Chicago every week, doesn't automatically make your show great. But every week that you show me Jade Cargill, I will be happy. So give me more Jade! And give me a hell of a lot less Brandy Rhodes!